I'm in the motorhome. I'm on the way to Florida, and the generator's running. Can you hear that that bad, or is that fine? Where I'm like at the back of a Walmart. <laughs> the, the pickup. <laughs> All right, everyone. Today we are talking about what happens when you take the full time leap. After this training, you will know what to expect, how to move forward, and how to grow even when you take the next leap. Moving from an operator to an owner. Now, this training is is huge because. These things apply to everyone, and these, these changes continuously happen over and over in your business. You keep shifting away from a position and going to the next. So even if it's going from working a full-time job and doing this on the side to going full-time, those major transitions just keep happening over and over and over again, and the same things continue to pop up in your mind. Uh, the, the different big points are, are, are always showing back up, and, and they're relevant to everyone in business. Jessica's going to like this first one. It's fear. Fear is huge. Maybe, maybe Zachary's going to like this one more, but, Zach, but uh, fear has been something that has been so huge in my business. Fear keeps most people from pulling the trigger really when it's usually just false expectations appearing real. You know, there's been so many times that I had a fear of spending money on marketing. I had a fear of hiring people. I had this or that. And the thought was always in my head, well, what if I hire these people and I can't keep them busy? What if I buy this piece of equipment and I can't afford it and, and like somehow the piece of machinery gets taken back from me or, or, or whatever? Or what if I spend all this money on marketing? Or what if I just take some really big bet on myself and it causes me to go bankrupt and I ruin my business and I fail everyone around me? And, and those could all be real possibilities, but Usually from time, you just keep proving yourself over and over again that it is false expectations appearing real. It's, it's something that you expect could happen, and it appears real because in all reality, it is something that could happen, but usually it's just a false expectation because it never does. And, and being entrepreneurs, as we all are, wanting to have businesses, this is a big part of it, going out not knowing the outcome, going anyway and figuring it out, committing first, figuring the rest out later. It's a huge part of business. And, and that's where I say it keeps a lot of people from even pulling the trigger. Uh -oh, just like this talk, going full time. It keeps a lot of people in a job because they want the security. So it creeps in when you start, uh, when you start and you have to extinguish it because fear causes procrastination. I think this is one of the biggest parts about it, that fear can actually cause you to procrastinate so much that you start to justify the fear. You know, you procrastinate so much on moving forward on something and you think and you think and you think and you think about it and you don't move on it. And then the whole thing starts causing you to either not make ground or have some sort of failure. And, and then you're starting to justify, oh, yeah, that, that was bad. And, and it just causes perpetual procrastination that keeps you from moving forward. A lot of times that's where plateaus and businesses really come from. And overall, the secret, the secret to all of this is to taking, just taking action in general, taking action kills fear. My dad, I was raised. And so for everyone that has a bunch of fear, I was raised with someone, literally anything you ask my dad to this day, I'm going to drive down to Florida. And the first thing I'm going to see him is about, I'm going to ask him about something. And he's going to be, his response is going to be, well, let's just think about it. Let's just think about it has always been his favorite response to everything because he never makes a decision on anything. And thinking about things for extended amounts of time never makes them easier. Think about bringing on the employees because you don't know if it's going to work or not. If you just keep thinking about that and try to make that make sense to yourself, it gets scarier and scarier and scarier. It, you can relate this to, I've never done this, so maybe I won't relate this to jumping out of a plane. I'll relate it to something I've done. I'll relate it to racing motorcycles. When you sit on the starting line, it is so scary while you wait there because you know that you could literally die in the race. You know, that's a, that's a, a, a race gone horribly wrong. But the second the gate drops, the second 30 other people take action with you and you start blasting off into a race, all of a sudden you have none of the fears you have and you just start moving. And then you get all that action happening. And just like in business, things, good things start happening from all the action you're taking. So there's been so many things in my life that fear 
has held me back on. I can relate with you, Zach, 110%. I got into personal development, things like what we're doing here. I got into, um, I didn't get into grant stuff first. I got into Tony Robbins stuff, which led me heavier into grant stuff. I got into it because I was afraid of spending money. I was so afraid that I was like hurting my family life. I remember in like 2018, when I first went to my first UPW, that was the one thing I was trying to solve. I'm like, I got to go somewhere because I am losing my mind with how freaked out I am of running out of money, not making it work and money being the one thing that just kills it all. And it's so crazy that as the transition has went with, with money, it's become less in less and less of a fear. And I remember when I had my first, probably one of my biggest failures in business, having to shut down Florida the first time and come back to Illinois. I was probably in the most financial mindset stress I've ever been in. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know, I'm always, I'm always scared about money, but I'm extra scared about money now. And she just looked at me and she said, you know, this is how you are all the time. This is always how you are. You freak out about money. You freak out about money. But the one thing you've never done is fail. You've never not had a way. You've never not came up with a way to do it. Entrepreneurs, they, they, they jump off of a cliff and build a plane on the way down. They don't know the outcome. It's not a job. It's not a job that you just go do and, and you know what you're going to get. You, you, you go out and you're building something on the way. And so, you know, that's, that's really empowered me. A lot of this personal growth, growth stuff has empowered me to get away from those fears and realize that that's what we do. We come up with solutions. And, and a good entrepreneur is always going to be able to come up with some sort of way to get out of a bind and move on to the next thing. After that part that I'm really passionate about, I want to get into to time. This is probably one of the biggest things. As you go away from full-time in a job and you be able to go full-time in your business or you're taking it to the next thing, you're able to get out of the field and you're able to go full-time into selling or working on your business or you, you even make another shift where now you're really high up and you're really working on the people in your business. Each time, it allows you to take full advantage of the excessive time and make massive progress. For, for this one area we're really talking about, going from part-time in the business, going to full-time, this time, this, all this extra time you, should get, you get should be spent on three things. Promotion, doing everything you can to be known by everyone. Networking, Instagram, YouTube, like everything you can do to get attention, anything that draws attention to you. There's going to be people that ask for radio spots and all these different things you need to promote yourself. Then sales, focus on getting better at sales, read um, any YouTube videos, anything you can learn about sales because promotion, marketing, and sales drive the growth of a business. And then third, delivering the service itself. You can make a ton of ground going from part-time to full-time or, or just a lot of ground in your business in general if you focus on these three things, really grind in on them, and continue. Just repeat and repeat. Promote, sell, deliver. Promote, sell, deliver. Focus on that. Don't lose track. Wake up every day. Be thinking about who is the, what is the, the lead I call today that has the next big project for me because I, I know I know that they've got something they've been thinking about for a while and just keep nurturing those leads and figure out how to promote, sell, and deliver. So like I said, you can make a ton of ground with just those three points. Every owner that I know that takes action on these three points and goes full time, it, it it's crazy that this happened to me at the conference I was at this weekend. It's happened to everyone I've ever talked to. What they all say is the same thing. Once they take action on those three things, once they go full time, the, the thing that they're most upset about is they didn't do it sooner. It causes explosive growth because now it's your full time focus growing your business. And everyone I've met, I, I was sitting at a table with a, a 34 year old. I'm 32. I don't know what the other guy's name, how age was. And then there was a kid with us that was 16 and he has a landscape business that's doing like 1.7 or 8 million. And we're all looking at him like, could you imagine what we would be like if we started this business when we were 13 or 14, like where we would be now? So that's the biggest thing for the people that watch this recording and are thinking about going full time. You're, 
you're going to be happy you did. And when you look back, you're just going to wish you did it sooner. From there, as quickly as you can, you need to start on a few of these things. These are things I hit on in so many YouTube videos, but these are things that are really going to hone in and help you grow your business. A CRM. I hear a lot of people not want to spend money on service autopilot or some of the better ones, but spend money on a good CRM because it's going to keep you active with those sales. The better the CRM, the better it's going to help you communicate with people and close more deals. Also source tracking inside of your CRM, preferably, so you can more effectively market. This is huge. You need to know where you're getting leads so you can market more effectively. And now the more money you make because you're growing your business and you're spending all your time on it, or even if you're taking a transition out, say you're out of the field and now you're full-time sales, the more you start racking up those sales, the more you need to be taking the profits and plowing them into marketing so you can sell more work. Also be focusing, if it's the start right now for you, be focusing on any free publicity you can get. There's so many free things. I mentioned like radio ads. People ask you about that. Anything like speaking in front of people, anything that anyone asks you about is kind of what we're getting into next. You need to say yes to everything. You read so many books that tell you say no, no determines where you go. When you are starting your business, say yes to everything. You've got such a finite thing going on right now that you just need to create more opportunity. So if someone asks you to be on the radio, say yes. If someone asks you to join a BNI group, come up with a few hundred dollars, figure out how to do it and join the BNI group so you can start networking. If someone asks you to speak at a local event, this is something, I did a couple of these early on in business. I was so scared to speak at a local event. But now looking back, like each time you do something, it just helps your network grow. So say yes until you just can't fulfill on the things anymore. Um, network as much as possible. Can't believe I led into that with an um. Networking is huge. The more people you know, the bigger the network, the better. No matter what time of your business it is. Networking, it should be your goal to grow a list of quality people in your network and then stay in touch with them. Put it on your to-do list to text people, check in, send emails, Keep up with what they're doing. You know, I like to just send a voicemail to a couple people I know, you know, because if they've got an iPhone, if not, send a text. I like doing the voicemails. They feel more connected iPhone to iPhone where I can just hold down the button. I can send a voice memo and, and just say, hey, man, hope everything is well. Hope you're kicking butt and just stay connected to people and see what they're doing. All of this looking back, I didn't know I was really doing all these, but now that I know how important all of them are. When If I was to start again, just like going to Cape Coral this time, I'm going to use all of these points to rev up business as much as possible. And the, the deal from going part-time to going full-time, this just keeps happening over and over in your business because first it's going from a full-time job and then going full-time into your business. Like I explained, then it's going from working in the field to starting to be in the office and sell more. And each time it ramps up your business and helps it grow faster. You know, from when I was part-time, it was like 16 to 20,000 in the first year. And being able to devote time to all these things in the first year, full time, we we're able to ramp that up to like 108 in sales. And it, it's focusing on these points. And then, it, then I just piled, I just put wood on the fire, learned more and more and more, did these things. Because after that first year, I didn't have a good CRM. I had Jobber. A lot of people have Jobber. They love it. But it may be better now, but it wasn't good enough then. And so I got the next best thing to help us grow faster. And that was service autopilot. So growth, once you get the time is huge. That's why there's another huge jump of growth. Once you get out of the field, because now instead of producing the work, you can focus on selling more 24 seven. And that's why your business gets another huge bump. After that, the next big point is money. It's a top priority to know your numbers. Even if you aren't the best at estimating yet, you need to know what you have to charge to make a profit. Yeah.